Hey guys, this is Jason Minardi with Group 9. So we're going to be focusing on two topics. One of them is going to be Miralax, and uh, the other one's going to be antacids. So I hope you enjoy. We're going to try to keep this as interesting as possible. Okay, so Miralax is an osmotic laxative, meaning it uses water to help relieve constipation. And so the active ingredient in Miralax is uh, polyethylene glycol 3350. And so how the product works is that when you take it, um, it helps push water to your large intestines as well as helps your large intestines retain more water. Uh, that way your stool becomes softer um, uh, so you can have more frequent bowel movements. Uh, so that's the basic rundown of the product. Um, however, there's a lot of controversy currently right now with this product, mainly because it's still relatively new um, and, and whatnot. So it was released about 13 years ago. And for the first six years, um, it was served as, uh, or the only way that you can get it would be if you had a prescription, okay? Then after that, the FDA approved it for over-the-counter, and again, they, I mean, obviously they had very specific guidelines on it, you know, your dosage, amount of time that you're, uh, you can take it consistently, um, and then also some side effects to look out for. The controversy lies is that if you take the name uh, polyethylene glycol and, and you break it down, um, you can kind of find some pretty scary stuff in it. And so, for instance, ethylene is, is um, found in different types of uh, gases, natural gas, coal gas, crude oil. It's also found in fruits um, when it's ripening and, and whatnot. Um, then polyethylene is found in different types of plastic products like plastic bags, containers, stuff like that. And then um, ethylene glycol is actually one of the main ingredients in different types of antifreezes. And so, but if you, if you put all those together, and um, you'd then get polyethylene glycol, which is an FDA-approved product um, for a, to be used as a laxative. The next controversy uh, behind this product is basically how it's being used. And so the FDA, like I mentioned earlier, uh, approved it to be used for short-term use. So if you actually read the bottle on the Miralax, it says, you know, don't use longer than seven days, don't take more than one dose a day, stuff like that, okay? However, um, uh, doctors out there are actually recommending this product to be used more on a consistent basis. Um, I'm one of those parents that was told that. Uh, we have a two-year-old little girl that is having constipation issues, and so we um, went to two different doctors that said, hey, you can use Miralax more on a consistent basis. The problem with that uh, is that um, the, the FDA never did any type of long-term um, consistent use studies on this product and so there are they don't know what it could lead to um, and so th they're starting to research it more and more now mainly because there's been cases where this has been causing um, seizures or possibly have links to autism stuff like that so for me as a parent um, I don't have a problem with Miralax because again it has been approved for short-term use I, you know, because of that, I believe it is safe to use short term. Um, but now knowing because of this project, doing a little bit of research behind it, that there aren't, there haven't, there hasn't been any studies done for long term use. If you use it consistently, what it could possibly be, possibly lead to, um, or, or what would the side effects be or, or stuff like that. I know for me personally, I might take my child off it, or I just might drastically reduce the dosage. And I would probably recommend that to other parents. Again, like I said, if you read the back of the bottle, the FDA, it is an approved FDA product. That's why you can buy it in the stores. It is over the counter and it's safe to use as long as it you use it um, for less than seven days in a row and, and, and follow the dosage on there. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we will now go to uh, Mr. Carlos who will be doing uh, antacids. Antacids. So you're probably wondering what the heck is an antacid? An antacid is a substance which neutralizes stomach acidity used to relieve heartburn, indigestion, or upset. These are some types of antacids. Alteria is made up of sodium bicarbonate and baking soda. But some risk of taking the alkyl seltzer is you could get you could develop high blood pressure and it also contains aspirin which could cause Ray syndrome. It is less potent and works slowly than others. It can cause constipation, loss of calcium, women past menopause shouldn't take it. And when antacids work on stomach acid they can produce gas which causes wind. Somaticone helps to stop this foaming effect and may sometimes be included within antacid medications. Many of the common antacids also include alginites, 
Most alginites work by forming a gel which floats on the top of the stomach contents. The gel acts as a protective barrier, preventing stomach acid from irritating the esophagus. How is this going to help in your life? Well, whenever you eat pizza or burgers or tacos, actually these things can be very helpful if you have any feelings in your stomach or your chest. Antacids work by counteracting or neutralizing the acid in your stomach. They do this because the chemicals in antacid are bases, which are the opposite of acids. A reaction between an acid and a base is called neutralization. This neutralization makes the stomach contents less corrosive. This can help to relieve the pain associated with ulcers and the burning sensation in acid reflux. <laughs>